Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Wheel of Shakespeare Challenge, the last one for the month of July. I'm uh, Mark. We're here with uh, myself, Brannon, uh, Shelia, Bill, um, Henry, uh, John, and Maggie. Maggie, I saw you're trying to get into the room. Uh, John, hopefully, is still here. He can fix the issue he had with his microphone when he gets back in. I didn't mean to be first. I, I bumped him because uh, Maggie will uh, perform before him. So Maggie, if you're watching, uh, just so you know, I, I did, uh, you will get in before, but I did let one person out so that you can get in. So um, anyway, um, we're glad to have that this many people back with us today. Uh, we're glad, uh, we're glad Bill is feeling better. Bill is back. Um, he had COVID two weeks ago. So uh, we're, we're happy that he has recovered and uh, doing better. And uh, I didn't plan it this way, but just based on the uh, randomly determined order, Bill is the one that gets performed first today. So Bill, welcome back. We're glad you're feeling better. Uh, you will perform for us and do. Here is my Irish nor shall this thing. Yeah, this is, um, oh yeah, this is discovering the um, Caliban, I believe, for the first time. Starts with here is neither bush nor shrub, the tempest, act two, scene two. <clears throat> and I go up to the point where Stefano comes in. I think, yeah, I think so. Hold on a second. Let me create the banner for you. Are you ready to go? Yes. <clears throat> Here is neither bush nor shrub to bear off any weather at all. And a, another storm brewing. I hear it sing in the wind. Yon same black cloud. Yon huge one. Looks like a foul bombard that would shed his liquor. If it should thunder as it did before, I know not where to hide my head. Yon same cloud cannot choose but fall by pailfuls. What have we here? A man or a fish? Dead or alive? <laughs> a fish. <laughs> he smells like a fish. A very ancient and fish-like smell. A kind not of the newest poor John, a strange fish. Were I in England now, as once I was, and had but this fish painted, not a holiday fool there would give a piece of silver there. There would this monster make a man. Any strange beast there makes a man. When they will not give a doit to relieve a lame beggar, they will lazy out ten to see a dead Indian. Like like a man and his fins like arms. Ooh, warm of my trough. I, I do now let loose my opinion. Hold it no longer. This is no fish, but an islander that hath lately suffered by a thunderbolt. 
Oh, alas, the storm has come again. My best way is to creep under his gabardine. There is no other shelter hereabouts. Mystery, misery, acquaints of man with strange bedfellows. I will be, I will here shroud till the dregs of the storm be past. See. Okay. Very nice. Um, I think you're the first one to do that. So um, since I added that to the wheel a couple weeks ago, so good first um, first take on that. Uh, Shelia is up next, and then um, Shelia is up, and then uh, on deck is Henry. We'll go after Shelia, and Shelia is okay. going to do. Oh, yeah, this is another one I just added. This is uh, Queen Catherine of Aragon from Henry VIII. Or reading with... Oh, my goodness. This Act is wonderful. Absolutely Act stunning. What's that? I said it's a stunning monologue. My goodness, I'm impressed. Great find. Yeah. That's such, such one of the obscure plays. People think of this one, but it's um, definitely a strong character. Okay, so have you found it? Yes. Okay, so whenever you're ready, go. Sir, I desire you do me right and justice and to bestow your pity on me, for I am a most poor woman and a stranger born out of your dominions, having here no judge indifferent, nor no more assurance of equal friendship and proceeding. Alas, sir, in what have I offended you? What cause hath my behavior given to your displeasure that thus you should proceed to put me off and take your good grace from me. Heaven witness, I have been to you a true and humble wife, at all times to your will conformable, even in fear to kindle your dislike Yea, subject to your countenance, glad or sorry, as I saw it inclined. When was the hour I ever contradicted your desire, or made it not mine too? Or which of your friends have I not strove to love, although I knew he were mine? Enemy, what friend of mine that had to him derived your anger did I continue in my liking? Nay, I gave notice he was from thence discharged. Sir, call to mind that I have been your wife in this obedience upward of 20 years and have been blessed with many children by you if in the course and process of this time you can report and prove it to against mine honor ought my bond of wedlock or my love and duty against your sacred person in God's name, turn me away and let the foul contempt shut door upon me. And so give me up to the sharpest kind of justice please you, sir. The king, your father, was reputed for a prince most prudent of an excellent and unmatched wit and judgment. Ferdinand, my father, king of Spain, was reckoned one the wisest prince that there had reigned by many a year before. It is not to be questioned that they had gathered a 
wise counsel to them of every realm that did debate this business who deemed our marriage lawful. Wherefore I humbly beseech you, sir, to spare me till I may be by my friends in Spain advised, whose counsel I will implore. If not, in the name of God, your pleasure be fulfilled. <laughs> hey, awesome. Two great new monologues. I'm glad I decided to uh, add to the wheel and uh, two great performances of the people that were cho chosen to do them. Um, so j just so once again, um, Henry is up and and the Brannon is on deck and uh, just just you know, I, I know that Maggie and Eleanor are both um, uh, trying to get into the room, uh, so just so there's no offense, uh, Shelia and Bill, who've both already gone, I'm going to bump them from the room just uh, so that um, so that um, the those other two can join us. I think I'll let them back in again when when it's time for them to go again. So um, the two of them trying to get in, just like just let you know, um, I made room for you when your turn comes up. But right now it is Henry's turn. Where is Here's Henry, and Henry will be doing. Um, do you know, do you happen to know the first line? I believe it's nay go not from us thus. Okay, got it. Oh, this is okay, so we're ready to go. This is Lumia. showed the Romans this we received and each in either side give the all hail to thee and cry be blessed for making up this peace thou knowest great son the end of war is uncertain but this certain that if thou conquer Rome the benefit which thou shalt thereby reap is such a name whose repetition will be dogged with curses, whose chronicle thus writ, the man was noble, but with his last attempt, he wiped it out, destroyed his country, and his name remains to the ensuing age aboard. Speak to me, son. Thou hast affected the fine strains of honour to imitate the graces of the gods to tear with thunder the wide cheeks of the air, and yet to charge thy sulphur with a bolt that should but rive an oak. Why dost thou not speak? Thinkest thou it honourable for a noble man still to remember wrongs? 
Daughter, speak you, he cares not for your weeping. Speak thou, boy. Perhaps thy childishness will move him more than can our reasons. There's no man in the world more bound to his mother. Yet here he lets me prate like one of the stocks. Thou hast never in my life showed thy dear mother any courtesy when she, poor hen, fond of no second brood, has clucked thee to the wars and safely home, loaden with honour. Say my requests unjust and spurn me back, but if it be not so, thou art not honest, and the gods will plague thee that thou restrain'st from me the duty which to a mother's part belongs. He turns away. Down, ladies. Let us shame him with our knees. To his surname Coriolanus longs more pride than pity to our prayers. Down, an end. This is the last. So we will home to Rome and die among our neighbours. Nay, beholds this boy that cannot tell what he would have, but kneels and holds up bands for fellowship, does reason our petition with more strength than thou hast to deny it. Come. Let us go. This fellow had a Volskian to his mother. His wife is in Karyalai, and his child like him by chance. Yet give us our dispatch. I am hushed until our city be afire. And then I'll speak a little. This is okay, the one. awesome. Um, yeah, okay. Maggie was commenting. We, we we did do that one pretty recently. I thought that uh, I thought that it was taken off the wheel temporarily, but uh, I sorry that uh, that we did ha have uh, the same one come up as recently as it did. But um, it's, a, it's a great monologue. I still never regret it. Henry did a great job with it, uh, and um, always good to see di different. Uh, talented people take different interpretations of the same thing but i will i did make sure i take it off so it'll be a while before we see that one again anyway uh after henry okay brannon is up and then i am on deck and then maggie who i who just rejoined the stream goes after so brannon then myself then maggie brannon is going to do I have it. I just have, yeah. Okay, whenever you're ready, go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> My liege, I did de deny no prisoners, but I remember when the fight was done, when I was dry with rage and extreme toil, breathless and faint, leaning upon my sword, came there a certain lord neat and trimly dressed, fresh as a bridegroom, and his chin new reaped showed like a stubble land at harvest home. He was perfumed like a milliner, and twixt his finger and his thumb he held a poncet box, which ever and anon he gave his nose and took it away again. Who therewith anger which when it next came there took in snuff and still he smiled and talked and as the soldiers bore dead bodies by he called them unto 
untaught knaves unmannerly to bring a slov slovenly unhandsome handsome corpse betwixt the wind and his nobility. With many holiday and lady terms, he questioned me amongst the rest, demanded my prisoner, prisoners in your majesty's behalf. I then, all smarting with my wounds being cold, to be so pestered with a pump and jay, all of my grief and my impatience answered neglectingly, I know not what. He should or he should not, for he made me mad to see him shine so brisk and smell so sweet and talk like a waiting gentlewoman of guns and drums and wounds. God save the mark. And telling me the sovereign thing on earth was parmacetti for an inward bruise. And that it was great pity. So it was. This villainous saltpeter should be dig digged out of the bowels of the harmless earth, which many a good tall fellow had destroyed so cowardly. And, but for these vile guns, he would himself have been a soldier. This bald and jointed chat of his, my lord, I answer directly as I said, and I beseech you, let's not his report, come current for an accusation betwixt my love and your high majesty. See. Okay. So, um, it is my turn now, and then after me, uh, uh, it'll be after me. It'll be uh, Maggie, then John, and then Eleanor, and then we'll move on to our scenes. So I am going to do. Now, entertain conjecture of a time when the creeping murmur and the pouring dark fills the wide vessel of the universe. From camp to camp, through the foul womb of night, the hum of either army stilly sounds. That the fixed sentinels almost receive the secret whispers of each other's watch. Fire answers fire. And through their paly flames, each battle sees the other's umbered face. Steed threatens steed, in high and boastful nays, piercing the night's dull ear. From the tents, the armorers accomplishing the knights, busy hammers closing rivets up, give dreadful note of preparation. The county cocks do crow, the clocks do toll, and the third hour of drowsy morning name. Proud of their numbers and secure in soul, the confident and over lusty French do the lowly rated English play at dice and chide the cripple tardy gated knight 
who like a foul and ugly witch doth limp so tediously away. The poor, condemned English, like sacrifices by their watchful fires, sit patiently and inly ruminate the morning's danger. And their gesture sad, investing lank lean cheeks and war-worn coats presenteth them unto the gazing moon so many horrid ghosts. Oh, now, who will behold the royal captain of this ruined band, walking from watch to watch, from tent to tent. Let him cry praise and glory on his head, for forth he goes and visits all his host, bids them good morrow and with a modest smile, and calls them brothers, friends, and countrymen. Upon his royal face there is no note how dread an army hath enrounded him, nor doth he dedicate one jot of color unto the weary and all-watched night, but freshly looks and overbears attained with cheerful semblance and sweet majesty, that ever wretch, pining and pale before beholding him, plucks comfort from his looks. A largesse universal like the sun, his liberal eye doth give to every one, thawing cold fear, that mean and gentle all, behold, as may unworthiness define, a little touch of Harry in the night. And so our scene must to the battle fly, where, oh, for pity, we shall much disgrace with four or five most vile and ragged foils, right ill-disposed and brawl ridiculous, the name of Agincourt. Yet sit and see, minding true things, by what their mockeries be. I've never done that one before, and that was a lot of fun. <laughs> okay, um, Mag Maggie is up, and John is on deck. Maggie. Hi. Hi. Glad to be here. here. Let's bring the wheel up, and you will do. Okay, spinning for Maggie. This one is another new one I've added. It's Theseus, Act Five. Can't see it five. while I'm looking. So, uh, Midsummer Night's Dream, Act Five. Is, it's Night's Dream, Act, Act five, five. I think this is Theseus speaking either right before or during the performance of the idiot players. Uh, it's yeah. really, more strange than true is how it, Act Five, Scene One begins with more strange than true. Let me create the banner. Okay, it's going to take less than a minute, probably. <laughs> it's okay. pretty short again. Wait, sorry. Let me create the bit. Don't go oh, sorry yet. Okay, take your time. Let me know though, because I'm not. I'm looking at the screen, not at the screen yard. Well, you do that. Okay, go ahead. Okay. More strange than true. I never may believe these antique fables. Fairy coys. Lovers and madmen have such seething brains such shaping fantasies that apprehend more than cool reason ever comprehends. The, loser, the lover and the poet are of imagination all compact. One see devils that vast hell can hold, that is, the madman. The lover, all is frantic, sees Helen's beauty in a bra of Egypt. The poet's eye, in fine frenzy rolling, doth glance from heaven to earth, from earth to heaven, and as a mad name bobbies forth the form of the unknown, the poet's pen turns them to shapes and gives to every nothing a local habitation and a name. Such tricks have strong imagination that if it would but apprehend some joy, it comprehends some bringer of that joy. On the night, imagining some fear, how easy is a bush 
proposed a bear. Hmm. Okay, short but sweet, mm -hmm. a new one, a good, uh, good, in, um, a good introduction of a new one to, to us again by one of our regulars. Um, love when we get to break in a new one for the first time, and they do a great job with it. Okay, John is up. Hopefully, he has fixed his uh, his sound. Can you can we hear, let's John? No, I st still can't hear you. Um, I'll I'll come. I'll, we'll try you one more time after Eleanor goes. Hopefully, you fix that. Uh, Eleanor, can, can you hear us? Yes. Okay, great. So so we got sound working for you. Okay, so spin for Eleanor, and then we will come. I'll come. I'll come back to John. Get, get, try one more time to see if we can get his microphone working. But Eleanor is going to do. <laughs> uh, uh, oh yeah, this, um, the epilogue to um, to um, as you like it, Rosalind. Found it. Okay, give me a second to create the banner. Okay, so whenever you're ready, go ahead. Hold one moment. The script has inconveniently disappeared so i must bring it back it is not the fashion to see the lady the epilogue, but it is no more unhandsome than to see the lord the prologue. If it be true that good wine needs no bush, it is true that a good play needs no epilogue, yet good wine they do use good bushes, and good plays close the better by the help oh, of I'm sorry, I should have let you know, but <laughs> what a case am I in that I'm neither a good epilogue, nor can I insinuate with you in the behalf of a good play. Uh, okay. I'm not please. furnished like a beggar, therefore to beg will not become me. My way is to conjure you, and I'll begin with the women. I charge you O oh, women, for the love you bear to men, to like as much as this play as please you. And I charge you, O oh, men, for the love you bear to women, as I perceive by your simpering none of you hates them, that between you and the women the play may please. If I were a woman, I would kiss as many of you as had beards that pleased me, complexions that liked me, and breaths that I defied not. And I am sure as many have good beards, or good faces, or sweet breaths, will for my kind offer, when I make curtsy, bid me farewell. Okay, very nice. So let's, let's see if John has got his sound fixed. Um, John, can you try one more time? No, I still can't hear you. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not sure about lightening the screen without. Um, okay. But anyway, um, we'll play around with those features. Uh, um, sure. Okay, but anyway, we are now ready to do our scenes. Uh, I had temporarily bumped uh, Bill and Sheila. I hope they are still. Um, um, I hope they're still um, following along on a separate tab in uh, YouTube, so that we can let them back in when it's their turn again. Let me bring up the scenes to spin for. 
characters for some. Okay, here's. Um, let's get some more, and then we'll go in reverse. We'll have Eleanor and Maggie and myself will make the first choices, and then, and and here's the thing: is that if you're still uh, just watching in YouTube, when it's your turn to choose, you can just type in there in the comments which one you're going to. Do. Okay, Anthony and Cleopatra. That is an Act three, scene ten, Scarus and Enobarbus. Scarus and Enobarbus. Julius Caesar, Brutus from Portia. Two, scene one, and oh, here's another one I, I recently added. Merchant. Uh, this is uh, Lorenzo and Jessica at the, the beginning of Act Five, scene one of Merchant of Venice. Lorenzo and Jessica. Mm -hmm. So the six roles we have to choose from, uh, just to recap, um, Antony and Cleopatra, Act 3, Scene 10, Scarus and Anabarbus, and then Brutus and Portia in Julius Caesar, Act 2, Scene 1, and then Lorenzo and Jessica in, um, in the, begin the beginning of Act 5, Scene 1 of Merchant of Venice. So... Um, Choosing in reverse order, um, Eleanor. Which which you get first choice of those? What would you like? I'm sorry. Repeat, please. Uh, you get first choice of those six roles. We have Scarus and Enobarbus in Antony and Cleopatra. We have Brutus and Portia in Julius Caesar, and then we have Lorenzo and Jessica in uh, Merchant of Venice. Uh, what were the middle two again? Brutus and Portia and Julius oh, Caesar, yeah. Act Two, Scene One. Uh, I'll I'll do Jessica. Okay. Um, Maggie, what would you like? I th think I'll just go the the regular way and take Portia. <laughs> Portia, okay. Be a girl. <laughs> in a regular I, Portia. Okay. I think I'll take Enobarbus and um, Brannon Brannon what would you like oh Lorenzo okay Brannon mm -hmm. will take Lorenzo Um, Henry, what would you like? There's only one left, isn't there? Scarus? We have Scarus and Brutus left. Oh, Scarus. Scarus. And then that leaves um, you. either, let's see, leaves either you. Henry uh, or Bill. Okay, so the two who are currently not in the stream, um, are, okay, Bill. Um, so Bill, that that will leave you to be Bill. Bill will be Brutus, and I. I let me type it in there so he knows as well. As well, um, I we bumped John since he couldn't um, his microphone working, so Bill can re-enter. Um, so he hope so that's the second scene hopefully bill will be able to get back into the stream to join maggie for the second scene but for now it's it's going to be um the fir first scene is going to be myself and henry doing start and obarbus and Scarus in antony and cleopatra Will you give me a bit of background? No. Who, who's Scarus? 
I believe. I. I believe uh, Anno Barbus is the chief lieutenant to Antony. I believe <laughs> I'm having a difficult time with this. As well. I believe Scarus is one of the lieutenants to uh, Augustus, and or, I don't know. They they might oh. both be, be um, on the other side. Well, let's just read and find out. Yeah, we'll, 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 yeah. Have to be cold, mm -hmm. I think, because I, I I think that it might be two lieutenant on, on either side. They might be on the same side. Mm -hmm. They both might they might both be uh, so subservient to Antony and this. Give me a second to find the. Um, Okay, so I, I start. Are, are you ready to go, Henry? Yeah. Okay. Not, not all not. I can behold no longer than Taniad, the Egyptian admiral, with all their 60 fly and turn the rudder. You'll see it, mine eyes are blasted. Gods and goddesses, all the whole synod of them. My passion. Well, the greater cantrel of the world is lost with very ignorance. We have kissed away kingdoms and provinces. Now, well, here's the flight. On our side, like the tokened pestilence where death is sure. Yon ribald nag of Egypt, whose leprosy or take in the midst of the fight when vantage like a pair of twins appeared both as the same or rather ours the elder the breasts upon her like a cow in june a host sail and flies that i beheld my eyes did sicken at the sight could not endure a further view she once being loofed the noble ruin of her magic antony claps on his sea wing and like a doting mallard leaving the fight in height flies after her i never saw an action of such shame experience manhood honor ne'er before did firelight so itself alack alack i are you thereabouts? <laughs> Maybe this wasn't the best one to add to it. I didn't realize there was a third character. It was so short before a third character enters, but I guess I'm <laughs> yeah, struggling to find more more material material to add. But uh, it was a short scene. We, yeah, we were on soldiers on the same side, both lamenting the fact that the battle's not going our way. <laughs> Antony is losing to to Augustus. Okay, so Bill, I believe, made it, yeah, Bill made it back in, so we got our Brutus and Portia. Isn't did you scroll to where you need to, do, do you know where we are? Bill, I found it, finally. Okay. I, I think I do, where Portia enters. Okay, I'm just asking. <laughs> Give me a second to create the banner. Okay. And, uh, so I start off with Brutus, my lord. Mm. When, when I'm not looking anymore at the screen, so please let me know when the banner is up. Okay, so whenever your two are ready, go ahead. Okay. Brutus, my lord. Portia, what mean you? Wherefore rise you now? It is not for your health thus to commit your weak condition to the raw cold yes. world? Oh, I just hang on. Okay. Um, sorry. Nor for yours neither. You've ungently, Brutus, stole from my bed. And yesternight at supper, you suddenly arose and walked about, musing and sighing, and with your arms across. And when I asked you what the matter was, you stared upon me with ungentle looks. I urged you further, then you scratched your head and too impatiently stamped with your foot. Yet I insisted, yet you answered not. But with an angry wafture of your hand gave sign for me to leave you. So I did, fearing to strengthen that impatience which seemed too much enkindled, and withal hoping it was but an effect of humor which sometimes hath his hour with every man. It will not let you eat nor talk nor sleep 
And could it work so much upon your shape as it hath much prevailed on your condition? I should not know you, Brutus. Dear my lord, make me acquainted with your cause of grief. I am not well in health, that is all. Brutus is wise, and were he not in health, he would embrace the means to come by it. Why, so I do. Good Portia, go to bed. Is Brutus sick? And is it physical to walk unbraced and suck up the humors of the dank morning? What, is Brutus sick and he will steal out of his wholesome bed to dare the vile contagion of the night and tempt the roomy and unpurged air to add unto his sickness? No, my Brutus, you have some sick offense within your mind, which by the right and virtue of my place I ought to know of. And upon my knees I charm you by my one commended beauty by all your vows of love and that great vow which did incorporate and make us one that you unfold to me yourself your half why you are held and what men tonight have had to resort to you for here have been some six or seven who did hide their faces even from darkness kneel not gentle portia I should not need, if you were gentle, Brutus, within the bond of marriage. Tell me, Brutus, is it accepted I should know no secrets that appertain to you? Am I yourself, but as it were, in sort of limitation to keep with you at meals, comfort your bed, and talk to you sometimes? Dwell I but in the suburbs of your good pleasure? If it be no more, Portia is Brutus harlot not his wife. You are my true and honorable wife, as dear to me as are the ruddy drops that visit my sad heart. If this were true, then I should know this secret. I grant I am a woman, but withal a woman that Lord Brutus took to wife. I grant I am a woman, but withal a woman well reputed, Cato's daughter. Think you I am no stronger than my sex, being so fathered and so husbanded? Tell me your counsels. I will not disclose them. I have made strong proof of my constancy, giving myself a voluntary wound here in the thigh. Can I bear that with patience and not my husband's secrets? Oh, ye gods, render me worthy of this noble wife. Hark, hark, one knocks. Portia, go in a while, and by and by, thy bosom shall partake the secrets of my heart. All my engagements I will construe to thee, all the character of my sad brows. Leave me alone with haste. See? Okay, great job, you two. Um, just realize, um, I'm sorry, I, I uh, to to Shelia, I skipped her. It was actually her choice. I I, I I forgot and skipped her. Went to Bill. You know, she should have had the choice. So I did. I I bumped Henry, who, who's already done his scene with me, uh, to make room for Shelia. She did make it back in. Uh, we're gonna do the Lorenzo and Jessica scene with Brandon and Eleanor, and then Shelia can do a second monologue. And since we skipped skipped her if she would like to just while she would like to perform whatever she wants instead of spin that's her option just um, just so she knows so we'll do this scene we'll do brandon and eleanor are going to do um lorenzo and jessica and then um and then shelia can either choose a monologue or spin for a monologue are you both try what which scene? Act five, Act five, scene one, Merchant of Venice. And I believe it's the top before all the other characters enter and all the hell breaks loose over the ring. This is kind of a side story between these two lovers. Got it. Okay, so whenever you're ready, go ahead. The moon shines bright in such a night as this when the sweet wind did gently kiss the trees. And they did make no noise. 
And such a night, Troilus, methinks, mounted the Trojan walls and sighed his soul toward the Grecian tents where Crescent lay that night. In such a night did this be fearfully o'er trip the dew, and saw the lion's shadow air himself and ran dismayed away. In such a night stood Dido with a willow in her hand upon the wild sea banks and waved her love to come again to Carthage. In such a night, Medea gathered the enchanted herbs that did renew old Aeas. In such a night did Jessica steal from the wealthy Jew and with an unthrift love did run from Venice as far as Belmont. In such a night did young Lorenzo swear he loved her well stealing her soul with many vows of faith, and ne'er a true one. In such a night did pretty Jessica, like a little shrew, slander her love, and he forgave it her. <laughs> I would out night you did nobody come, but I, I hear the footing of a man. Who comes so fast in silence of the night? Okay, nice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we have Shelia back now. And uh, Shelia, did you have one that you wanted to do or do you want to spin? Oh, I have a wild card. I've been wanting to do this one. Okay, great. Well, what is it? This is Volumnia from Act 3, Scene 2 of Coriolanus. Oh, we, we know the, the one that we've seen done repeatedly and that, that, that I should have retired. I, oh, at least I thought I had. I didn't. So she has a, another uh, good one. And, uh, you have not done 3, 2? Oh, my God. This is like the most incredible thing. And I will say I did blend a couple of done. shorter sections into one. But this is like I'm what, I, ever. In fact, I'm going to have you do it, and then mm. I'll look for it. But in case I can't find it, uh, e email me because uh, I, I, I'm I'm excited if you have a new one that's that's worth adding to the wheel. Oh, she's a great character, and I, and I do that. Yes. And she has that one great monologue. But we've great. kind of done it to death at this point. So if you if you know another great monologue of hers, that's even better. I, I'm glad to. I won't, I'm interested in seeing what you have to do with this, and then adding it to the wheel for future use. So. Great, so whenever you're ready, go ahead. Bravo. Oh, sir, 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 I would have had you put your power well on before you had worn it out. You might have been enough the man you are with striving less to be so. Pray be counseled. I have a heart as little apt as yours, but yet a brain that leads my use of anger to better vantage. You are too absolute. I have heard you say honor and policy like unsevered friends in the war to grow together. Grant that and tell me in peace what each of them by the other lose that they combine not there. If it be honor in your wars to seem the same you are not, which for your best ends you adopt your policy, how is it worse that it shall seek companionship in peace with honor as in war, since the two both it stands in like request? Now it lies on you to speak to the people not by your own instruction, nor by the matter which your heart prompts you, but with such words that are but rooted in your of no allowance to your bosom's truth. Now this no more dishonors you at all than to take in town with gentle words which else would put you to your fortune and the hazards of much blood. I 
would dissemble with my nature where my fortune and my friends at stake required I should do so in honor. I am in this, your wife, your son, the senators, the nobles, and you will rather show our general louts how you can frown than spend a fawn upon them for the inheritance of their loves and safeguard of what that they want might ruin. I pray thee now, my son, go to them with this garland in thy hand. And thus having far stretched it here, be with them thy knee bussing the stones. For in such business action is eloquence, and the eyes of the ignorant more learned than the ears. Bowing thy head, humble as the ripest mulberry that will not hold the handling. Or say to them, thou art thy soldier, and being bred in broils, hast not the soft way which thou dost confess were fit for thee to use as they to claim in asking their good loves. But thou wilt frame thyself forsooth hereafter theirs, so far as thou hast power and person. Their hearts were yours, for they have pardons being asked. Tell Pretty her. sweet son, go and be ruled. Although I know thou hadst rather follow thine enemy in a fiery gulf than flatter in a bower, as thou hast said, my praises made thee first a soldier. So no, he didn't have my praise. For this, perform a part thou hast not done before. I think twill serve if you can there to frame your spirit. You must and will. Prithee now say you will and go about it. See. Okay, awesome. So yeah, I would definitely like to see that again with other people's takes on it. That was awesome. But um, yeah, I, I let me know the point so I can put that on the wheel. That's um, for future use. Now, uh, before we go, Henry had something he wanted to say before we left. Uh, Henry? Um, oh, hello. Yes, I, I'd just like to say I'm finding restrain really, really frustrating because um, not only the bumping, which, uh, which makes me anxious, but um, uh, just uh, the, the interface from this side is so cluttered and, and the private chat keeps on coming up and, and um, it, it's, it, it's just very frustrating to do. I just wonder if, if you'd okay. consider going yeah. to- uh, I don't just, you know, Next week, you know, when I send the link out, or, or, or before I send the link out, because then it would be too late, do let me know. I mean, because there's the plus between StreamYard and um, and Restream. You know, there's pluses and minuses on both sides. Uh, however, the thing with the bumping, I, I did mention that. Yeah, it's we're limited to six people in the room at one time. But even with StreamYard, we're limited to eight people. This if if a ninth person wants to get in, we'd have to do the same thing. And ideally, I would like to get more than eight. <laughs> get as many people as possible. So I think that's, I mean, yeah, it's more likely to be a problem when we're limited to six than eight, but uh, it's still potentially a problem on either platform that we have to deal with. Um, and like, I, I know like wanting to stream to another platform was an incentive to have this. Also, I found playing the, adding video into the stream to play the intro every week you guys don't see this, but it's a thousand times easier to do it from Restream than StreamYard. So that's another uh, motivation. But th these are all factors. But um, 
again, we'll, we'll make it a democracy if, if people if people concur with Henry that um, they would rather go back to, to using StreamYard to do this stream every week. Uh, let me know via email before next week, and uh, and I'm, I'm if. I, mean, I told you my reasons for the preference. Also, the fact that you know it was difficult. You know, the the uh, it was. I, I'm going back and forth with the different tabs, and what I was noticing before Henry commented is that it was very awkward at first. But at least for me, I'm saying it looks like we're getting used to it. It looks like um, people uh, they get bumped, but um, unlike the first time we tried it, they get bumped, but they they're still commu in communication with us and uh, on you on on the YouTube chat and. I think we're starting. My my view is that it was definitely that was definitely a problem, but I think we're getting used to it. But so that's my feeling on that. That my my feeling on um, the um, the the pros of restream over Streamyard. But despite that, we'll still make it a democracy among the regular members. And if the if I'm outvoted on this, you know, I, I'll I'll go ahead and go back to Streamyard next week. But let me know via email before next week. But for you guys and also for everybody watching, we hope you enjoyed our performances today and we'll see you next week. Same time for the Wheel of Shame.